welcome to another session of Canvas and Paint offered by Garden City Arts. My name is Katie Guthrie and I am going to be walking you through this fun little summer inspired painting step by step. Uh, I will show you some tips and tricks along the way and make sure you have all of the supplies you need before you get started. So if you purchase the kit from Garden City Arts, you can lay out your colors in the order that you see here, one through seven, on your foam plate. Make sure you have your cup of water handy, a paper towel, and something not provided in the kit, you need to have some paint brushes on hand. Um, I would suggest two different sizes of wash brush, um, wash brushes, sorry, uh, one big and one small. I'd also suggest a round brush and a shader brush doesn't matter the size, whatever you're comfortable with. Okay, if you have all of those items ready to go and your canvas painted black laid out in front of you, then you are ready to proceed to step number one. Okay, so before we get started, let's talk a little bit about how to use a black canvas effectively. Um, the more water you put into your paint, the thinner the paint is going to be, or the more transparent it is going to be, and the more that black canvas will show through. So for instance, when you're using white, you can make it appear gray by adding a lot of water to it, and as it dries, it might look white at first, but as it dries, it will um, really dry transparent and let that black show through, so you'll have a gray instead of a white. If you use no water in your paint, just use thick heavy paint then it will um, be opaque or not see-through and it will stay or remain the color that you want it to be so like white so we're going to work from the back to the front and we're going to uh, start by kind of getting in this hazy cloud um, behind our moon and establish a horizon line now behind the moon it's going to be very transparent so i'm going to pick up my wash brush and i'm going to grab a little bit of paint on my brush and on my palette i'm going to mix those two together to make a glaze okay a glaze is a watered down amount of paint and you apply sorry i'll rephrase that a glaze is watered down paint that you apply in thin layers on your canvas Okay, so once again, I am not applying thick, heavy white paint. That's not the goal here. The goal is to get kind of this hazy uh, gray sky behind the moon to give it um, a, a nice eerie effect, I guess you could say. Um, so I am going to first start by using the top edge of my brush at its thinnest point and draw in the horizon line. Okay, so this is where the sky meets the lake. Then I'm gonna turn my brush to its thinnest point and I'm gonna start applying that paint and I wanna create almost like a dome, a half circle, okay? So it's really wide where it touches the horizon line and as it goes up and away, it's going to get thinner and more curved. So I'm just going to quickly throw that in uh, again, a glaze is watered down paint and it's when you apply a thin layer of that watered down paint onto your canvas. Now I can maybe thicken it up a little bit every once in a while and throw in some heavier layers if I want to, but that's all you do. It's that simple. Now I know it looks weird probably at the moment, but as this dries, it's going to dry more transparent and it will have the effect of being more of a gray than that bright white. Okay, so I'm going to let this dry now and move on to step number two. Back with step number two. Next, we're going to put in some stars and also our moon. You can use the back end of your brush to do the stars. We're using thick opaque paint, so don't water it down. We want it to stand out and be visible. And I can just come in here. If I use the kind of turn it to the side, it'll be a bigger star. If I use the dot, the thinnest point of the butt of the brush, then it'll remain a very thin, small dot. You can put in a variety 
And even though there's going to be trees on the sides, you can still put some stars in if you want. It's not a bad thing. You never know. You might not cover everything up. And you want a star there. Okay, so stars are finished. Now I can come back to um, my horizon line. And I'm going to continue using my wash brush, my half inch wash brush. However, if you're a beginner painter, you might switch to a shader brush. It might be a bit easier to control. I'm gonna use thick heavy paint to apply my moon. Um, you don't have to put your moon in the center. I'm gonna put it off to the side this time, even though in the original I had it pretty much dead in the center. I'm using the top edge of my brush to create a very round semicircle. Try to make it pretty even. I can fill it in. And now I'm gonna start using the edge of my brush. Um, if you're using the shader brush, you can use kind of the side of it to tap in my white. The reason we have to do this is that the canvas is still a little wet and so the paint isn't going to want to stick to it. So I'm doing tapping, this tapping motion, laying on a really thick heavy layer of paint so that not only does it stay but it also covers. Okay and I can just keep doing that until I'm happy with my moon. Might have to keep going, might have to perfect it a little bit. I always, whenever I'm painting the moon, I always do one dark, one white side of the moon. And there we go, we have our night sky. We're ready to move on to step number three and start working on some water. Okay, step number three, we're gonna change up the colors. We are moving from a titanium white to an ultramarine blue. Uh, now, we are going to create the illusion of water. We do not have to paint this whole thing in blue. It is a night painting, okay? Night scenes have limited light, so you won't be able to see everything. I am going to continue using my wash brush, and I'm going to focus this blue color wherever my light source is, okay? So, I know that this would only show up in a night scene wherever there's a light source. So I'm going to throw on a little bit of this paint really fast. Now here's the problem with ultramarine blue, at least the brand that we use. It is extremely transparent to begin with. You don't even have to add water to this paint to make it transparent. It's just transparent by itself. So this is going to start to dry and get darker and that's okay. However, it will blend into your black if you don't use enough of it. Um, or if you don't add a little bit of white to it. So we're going to take just a touch of white and mix it into our blue to make sure that we can see this ultramarine blue and it doesn't disappear as it dries. So I'm gonna start with just a little bit of white mixed into it just to get it started. And notice how I'm going back and forth, left to right. I'm also using the top edge of my brush as I'm doing this because I'm creating kind of the, the ripples that were, you would see in a lake. Okay, you can bring it down a little bit lower if you want. You can bring it down as low as you want, really. Um, it's your painting, remember. So if you're like, man, I just really like that blue, I want more blue, that's cool, go for it. Okay, I'm gonna just mix a little bit more white in and then I will be done with this step. I'm going to be a little bit more sparingly. I'm not gonna be as heavy handed as I was before. And I'm going to put on little highlights of this light blue. Wherever I feel like the moon's light would be strongest. So I'm using it primarily at the horizon line, but I can bring it down just a little bit, some little tiny bits down here. Again, I'm not using tons of it and I can add more white and do a second highlight kind of on there if I want to, to make it just a little bit brighter and pop a little bit more. 
And just like that, and we're done. We have our moon and we have our lake. We're ready to move on. Okay, for this next step, we're going to kind of break away from reality and we're going to brighten up uh, the foreground considerably. Even though this is a night painting and there's limited light, um, we still need to be able to see the elements we're putting in. So I'm gonna pretend like maybe this person who's walking through here has a lantern or something and it's brightening up the ground. And that is why we're gonna be using such a bright color. Oh no, don't drop your container on your painting. Uh -oh. That could have been bad. Um, so go ahead and grab color number three and you're going to start using a different brush. You can use either a shader brush or a round brush for this step. Everybody's different. What we're gonna be doing on this next step is doing a whole bunch of this little flicking motion to make blades of grass. The reason we do this flicking motion is because you want it to be really heavy, and I'll demonstrate this in a second. You want it to be very heavy at the base and then get to a nice point as you flick up and away. So I'm going to use my round brush and I'm going to use color number three, which is a permanent green mixed with tons of titanium white. And I'm going to, and I think I even put a little bit of yellow in it, cadmium yellow in it. And I'm going to start putting in my grass, okay? We do not have trees yet, so um, we are just kind of creating a ground on which our trees can grow. I'm gonna start in the middle and I'm gonna keep these lines pretty low in the middle, okay? Um, I want, so do you see how I'm flicking? So pushing hard and then coming up to a point as I flick away. So you start hard and then point up to a point as you flick away, okay? You do that a whole bunch. You're gonna be doing that quite a while. And you're probably gonna have to build paint up because the first few layers might feel kind of transparent. Remember, we're painting on black canvas, so if you mix water into the paint, it's going to um, turn your light green into a more of a gray green. And I'm starting low in the middle, and then I'm going to work my way up along these edges and create of a curved bowl of our bank. So here we go. So that is going to be the bank. It's going to curve. Now I need to fill everything down here. I don't have to go all the way to the bottom. I can leave some of the black showing because again, this is a night painting and not everything is going to be visible. So I'm going to just show you really fast how I'm gonna come down. I'm having to load my brush up with a lot of paint. So don't worry if you are getting like globs of paint on your brush, that's okay. okay so I'm gonna come down and then I'm gonna stop right about there because I want my grass to just kind of fade into my black. I'm gonna speed up the video and do all of my grass really fast and then we can move on. Remember you can pause it once you get to um, I'm sorry, you could pause the video, you can always go back and do your own thing, and once you get to a good point, then you can move forward and unpause the video. Right, we have our grassy bank in, now we have a ground on which to build some trees. Um, now, these trees, they can be super, super simple. You can keep them as simple or as complex as you'd like. One thing that's gonna really help you is to grab your chalk that was also included in your kit. This is a tool that you can use to draw things out. If um, you make a mistake with your drawing, you don't like a line you made, you can erase it with a clean damp brush. And when you paint over this chalk, it completely disappears and uh, the paint covers it up. So you're good to go, no one will know. Um, I'm going to start uh, with the trunk. So I'm just drawing big, two big curvy lines. See how it looks like almost parentheses? We're holding in this beautiful picture that we, of the uh, lake with the moon on it that we came across. So first, that's what we do. We start there. Then after we have these commas, we can turn these into tree branches. And we have to figure out what to do with this empty space right here. So this empty space, 
we can turn into a tree by putting the letter V. Do you see that? Very, very simple. So start it along one branch, draw on the V, and there you go, you have a tree branch. Now you can make it more complex by adding in little branches. I'm gonna cut down some branches that I didn't like. I'm gonna redraw those branches. Um, and just keep going until you have a tree that you are happy with. Now, keep in mind, keep it simple. Don't have to go crazy and you don't have to draw a whole bunch of little tiny branches because we're gonna put some leaves up here and cover everything up and you don't have to worry about it. So no stress, okay? Don't worry too much about your trees. The way you paint the trees, the technique that you use with color number four and either brush, um, your, sorry, your round brush or your shader brush is the more important thing, okay? Now, I personally don't really like round brushes. I like shader brushes. When you use the shader brush, you can use it at its thinnest point to make a really nice line or at its thickest point to make a thicker line. Um, it's a really great tool. I use the top edge of it quite a bit, um, so you can choose whether to use a round brush or a shader brush. And we're gonna use this brush to paint on the texture of our tree. So like I was saying, it's really important how you paint the tree on more so than the shape. You can kind of get away with funky trees, but you need the tree itself to feel believable and feel like bark. You are going to let some of the black show through and you're gonna paint on lots of these curvy lines. And make sure you're covering up your chalk as you go. And we're painting on this texture. So I am starting at the tip of my tree trunk, the branch, sorry, the tip of the branch and working my way into the tree trunk. Um, now, as you paint this on, the actual branch itself can be just thick, heavy gray paint. But as you get to that tree trunk, that's when you have to remember, oh yeah, I want this texture. So I'm just going to create all of these lines with letting some of the black paint show through and working my way down into the grass. Once it's on the grass, you can kind of cover up some of that grass and think of the roots. The roots are similar to the branch. They just go out and uh, that's the base to hold up your tree. So make sure your roots or the base of your tree kind of comes out and creates like a funnel shape, okay? That's important. And there we go, I have one tree finished. Um, I am gonna come back in and do some more stuff to it. For instance, if you have a line right here from your horizon line, you can apply more layers of paint to kind of get rid of that line. If you have some green showing through the base of your tree, again, uh, apply more paint to cover up the base of that tree. As long as you don't cover up all of the black and let some of it show through, you're good to go. Um, I can also come back in with some light and highlight it here in a moment. I'm going to speed up the video and do this side of the tree really fast and then we'll move on. Okay, now that we have the base of the tree, we need to start adding some white. Oops, that's the wrong color. Don't use yellow. Make sure you use white, color number one. We're gonna add some white. So remember how we built up the ultramarine blue? We started dark and then we slowly added light. We are doing the same thing to this. We're adding white to our gray paint to slowly lighten it up and brighten it up. And we can use this white paint to really layer on the texture of the tree. I'm gonna to switch to my round brush even though I hate it. I'm not having very good luck with my shader brush today. That shader brush has uh, not been treated kindly and its bristles are not really working so well. So I'm going to use my round brush and I'm going to paint on the texture of the tree. Now, again, I start, start with just a little bit of white. I can always build up and I can, um, if you want a lot of detail in your tree, you can use this white, especially the subtle white that you don't have a, I'm sorry, you can use 
the in-between gray, the gray that doesn't have a lot of white mixed into it, um, and use it to create some texture on your tree, even in the center point part. Now, the brightest gray, or the lightest gray, the, the version that you mix the most white into, that needs to stay right along the trunk of the tree that's closest to the moon because that is what is getting the most light from the moon. It's highlighting that part of the trunk, okay? So I'm going to use a lot of white right along there. And then again, if I want to use less white, so it'll be a darker gray, I can use that to just kind of come in here and perfect my tree a little bit, clean it up, Maybe it's a little all over the place. I didn't do the best job with my tree. Okay, just like that. I'm gonna do the other side and then we'll move on. Okay, so if you are being really, or if you're really bothered by all the chalk that was left behind on that last step, you can take it off with a clean, damp brush, but remember, um, if your paint is still wet, there's a possibility that you could hit a wet patch and create a streak. Generally, I just leave it and know that it's going, not going to be there at the very end. But again, if it bothers you, get it off. Just make sure that your paint is dry first. We're gonna move on to the swing. Now, something I forgot um, to mention and plan for, but that's absolutely essential, is a place to attach our swing. I'm gonna keep my swing on the kind of the left side of my painting. So it's a good thing I have a branch here that I painted in before we started this step. If you need to, go for it. It's a super easy step. Just grab that gray paint and paint it in. And I'm going to build um, that, I'm going to hang that swing off of that branch. It needs to be a believable branch that is thick enough and strong enough to hold that swing. Now, before we actually uh, put in the strings of the swing, we need to focus on the base or the seat of the swing. We're going to create kind of a rhombus. I think it's a rhombus. Um, basically where our sides are not parallel but kind of pointed towards each other. They're going to meet eventually if we were to continue drawing them. And then I'm going to do two curvy lines uh, one on the top and one on the bottom, and that is going to be my swing. Now this swing can be quite low and sit almost close to the grass. Who's to say, this, you know, if the grass is really tall? Okay, that's absolutely fine. So if you need to do that, no worries. I'm gonna keep mine just above the grass line. And then I'm going to draw two parallel lines up to where it's going to hang from the tree. Okay. We're going to break open color number five, which is um, a color that I created using ultramarine, I'm sorry, um, burnt umber and burnt sienna. Uh, so it's just kind of a reddish brown. And I'm going to use my shader brush or my round brush, whichever you prefer. And I'm going to first paint in a nice layer of this brown concoction to give it a base. Now it's not going to look pretty. It's just going to be a solid weird shape that you're not going to really understand what it is and that's okay. It will not stay that way. We'll paint in some details uh, using the white paint in just a moment. Now this is the tricky part. You need to create a almost straight line from your branch to your swing. Um, what you'll notice is that the chalk really dries out your paint. So even if you feel like you have enough paint on your brush, you may have to go back in and do a second layer of paint um, because that chalk really dries out your paint fast and causes problems. This line can be quite thick. Mine is, and I'm not stressing about it because after all, we want it to be seen. Um, now, if you're a perfectionist and you're really, like a, a realist maybe is a better word, and you're really concerned, you could tie it around that branch. We probably won't see it because we're gonna add a whole bunch of leaves. Okay, 
So I have my base. Now I'm going to grab my round brush and I'm gonna start painting in some details. I'm sorry, I have a very squeaky chair at home. Um, I'm going to paint in some details. I'm gonna grab some white paint, mix it into my brown to create a lighter version. Now, the strings need to be in the center or the base of the, the swing. I'm going to put this light starting at the front of the swing that's closest to the moon. And I'm gonna paint around the strings to make it seem like it's dark where the string attaches to the middle, okay? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just gonna continue painting. Again, we are going from kind of a medium and then we'll work our way to a dark. But I'm just gonna paint in around those strings. So now I have the strings connected in the middle of the chair. If you can hear my dogs freaking out about squirrels outside, I apologize. Hopefully that's not a distraction. Hopefully you couldn't hear that. And I'm just gonna keep mixing in white paint and adding in these details until I'm happy with my swing. So basically I'm creating um, a swing that is highlighted by the moon on the front and kind of the side the side closest to the moon, and if you go too crazy, you can always add the dark back in and keeping it dark in the back where it's furthest away from the moon. Okay, just like that, I have my swing almost finished. The only thing left to do is to highlight the ropes. Now, this is where the chalk becomes a problem because you will want to erase the chalk so that you can make sure that your highlights are in fact paint and not chalk. So I'm going to very gently and carefully clean that chalk up, hoping not to disrupt any wet paint. Okay, and there we have it. Now I'm going to put on with my light brown paint very, very carefully. Just a little highlight on the side of the rope. It doesn't have to be super, super big or obvious. It can be really subtle. And there we go. I have my swing. So next we need to make this scene feel a little bit more summery and a little less fall by adding some leaves to our tree. We're using uh, color number six for this step and that is basically this but mixed with uh, gray uh, in order to basically, it's basically this and this mixed together um, to make it more have a, a less saturated tone. Um, now I am going to use my big brush for this because I'm impatient. If you want to go slower, you can use a shader brush but it's gonna take you a lot longer. And I'm going to start dotting in the leaves of my tree. I can use the top edge of my brush or the side of the brush to fill in space. I can also use the corner of my brush to get smaller lines. So top edge is gonna create more of a um, vertical line. Side is going to create more of a fluff and the edge of the brush is gonna create like more individual leaves. Okay, you're gonna do a combination of all of those and really just keep doing this, this motion, a whole bunch, whole bunch of this motion and you don't feel like you have to stay at the tips of the trees. Like don't do that, okay? That we call that poodle trees. Don't do that. Um, branch out, okay? There's a whole bunch of little branches that we're not seeing that convey those leaves and fill in our trees just millions and millions of those little, well, hundreds and hundreds of those little branches on those trees so that we don't even realize that they're there and that's how we can fill in our tree and make it feel more lifelike and full. Now, again, you can cover up some of 
your swing where it attaches so that, you know, that mystery stays to be a mystery and you don't have to worry about making it look realistic. And make sure you go all the way up to the top edges of your painting. Try not to get too heavy with the paint in every single area. Some areas can be really heavy and thick. Other areas, maybe you need to back off and keep it, keep it light. You can also come in and put in some gray if you get too crazy. Okay, grab some gray and tone it down if you went too crazy like I did. Okay, make sure it comes off off the edges. Make sure it's not the exact same, treated the exact same way everywhere. And then after you're done with a good solid base of leaves on your tree, you can come back to the bright green. And if you would like to, after you have enough of these down here, you can take the light green and add just little tiny highlights of this lighter color wherever it's closest to the moon. Okay. You can also switch over to a smaller brush if you're worried about making too much. And just like that, we're finished. Um, the only other thing we're going to worry about really fast is down here. You can use this green that we use for our leaves with your round brush and you can use it to just kind of paint in maybe some of the um, bottom parts of your grass, put in a few little lines, and that will help transition from light green, right where the moon is, to kind of this darker um, area where it disappears into the black. You can also use it to cover up maybe some of your um, tree trunk to make it feel more grounded, like it's a part of the ground as opposed to like sitting on top of it. And then we're just about finished. We just have a few insects to put into our painting. Okay, so finish up perfecting, take as much time as you need, and then when you're ready, move on to the next step. Okay, for the very last step, we're using color number seven, which is basically cadmium yellow and white mixed together. And we're going to use the back end of our brush one more time to put some dots on our canvas. Wherever there's a dot, we're gonna create some lines to create the illusion of a firefly. So I'm going to put some dots on the trees and maybe closer into the leaves. Um, even though we don't have fireflies here in Southwest Kansas, sadly, um, they do tend to stay in the grass or stay on trees. They like to land and like stay a while. Um, so go ahead and put some on your trees, in your grass, wherever you feel like a firefly would like to stay for a while. Then use the front end and the round part of your brush. And remember, you can use thick paint or you can add water into it to create a more transparent layer of paint. You can do a combination of both of these things. So thick, heavy applications of paint, and then maybe thinner, watered down amounts of paint as it comes away. So what we're doing is we're creating, we have our lightning bug. Now we're creating the illusion of light being cast out, being captured into the darkness and then kind of dissipating and, fall, and um, falling away into the darkness. So I'm going to do some curved lines really close to the firefly. And then as it comes out, the lines get further away and disappear into the darkness. It's swallowed up, okay? If you feel like your uh, yellow paint isn't strong enough, you can mix some white into it and that will brighten it up and make it stand out a lot more, okay? Be careful not to overdo that though. So I'm just going to quickly outline all of my fireflies. Okay, we're finished. Um, the only thing you have left to do is to remove any chalk lines that are still visible. Um, that is a really excellent way to 
finish your painting. Also make sure you sign this guy. And when you are done with that, find the perfect place to hang your beautiful new painting in your home. I hope you had fun painting today. Remember, you can always go back and rewatch the videos or continue painting as long as you want until you're happy with your final product. Have a good rest of your day.